hey, it's Marie at A Place to Heal. And uh, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me once again. Um, you know, recently I posted a video uh, called YouTube Knows What You're Into and They're Telling All Your Friends. And it was basically a, a harmless video that I did to um, help people make their uh, status private so that people didn't know what they were viewing on YouTube and blah, blah. And I had uh, a tons, and I'm talking a lot, of emails off that video, <laughs> more than anything else I've done. Uh, tons of comments and, and, you know, and emails of people losing their mind. I mean, literally losing their mind. Um, you know, confessing and all, I mean, all sorts of stuff. And because of that video, this video is being made. And uh, the reason I'm doing this video, and you know it's going to be one of those real intense videos. Um, you know, because I think that we really need to stop and try to figure out why something like that would make us lose our mind. Why someone else knowing our business upsets us so. Because I personally, I don't care uh, what I'm looking up. Um, I don't care who sees it. Uh, I'm on YouTube. I mean, my life is pretty much an open book. And um, number two, I don't feel that I need uh, to explain to people. Um, because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there going, what the heck is she doing doing watching that? Or, you know, what? oh my gosh, you know, what is this woman into? And personally, I've gotten to a point where I now live behind open doors. And, um, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, um, I was taking care of my two-year-old granddaughter. And she taught me a very valuable lesson that I have not forgotten and I probably will never forget. And I'm hoping to share with you guys in hopes that you guys uh, can take it and run with it also. And, um, you know, I would get up in the morning and she would start getting dressed. And I would look at her and I would sit there and I'd go, Honey, um, you do realize that none of your clothes match, right? And she goes, Yep, no care. And she'd go along her merry way. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then we would go to the park. And I would tell her, I would say, honey, go up to that little boy and tell him that he's got his shoes on backwards. And she'd go, okay. And she'd go over there and she'd come back. She goes, yeah, he said no care. And I was like, okay, well, he's going to fall down and break his head. And, you know, she goes, yeah, no care. So I was like, okay. And I would just get so frustrated because I was like oh, I wouldn't change his shoes for him and you know I want to change her clothes and make her match and and then I started realizing that the problem was not with her the problem was with me and wanting to control things and wanting to be people you know have people be a certain way because that's what I was taught that that's the way it should be so, you know, I mean, it's like finally when um, when it just finally came to a head was one afternoon when she was playing outside and she was making, um, I had walked outside to tell her that her mother was on the phone and I walked outside and there she was in ever splendid glory sitting up to her uh, waist in mud and she had mud all over her and I was like, oh no, oh, and then I sat there and I go, your mother's on the phone and she just looked at me and she goes busy no care and I was like oh hell no this little girl did just and you know at that point I had to stop I told her mother she doesn't want to come to the phone she's uh, up to her elbows in mud and I had to go and check in on myself I, I let her continue playing and I went into the bedroom and as I watched through the window I sat there and I said, what is the harm in this? We have laundry detergent. There's soap and water in the bathroom. There's no harm in this. She's busy. She's enjoying herself. She does not want to stop 
to talk to her mother, which in my eyes was rude, but in her eyes it wasn't. And I had to start realizing that the world was not according to Marie. Everyone has a different view of the world. And then I started thinking, well, what would my world be like if I took on that type of attitude? What would happen? And some wonderful things began to happen. I was with some friends in the car and we had gone to the mall and I parked my car and one of my friends said, because I decided that I was going to have no care days, not don't care, no care. It was like not a care in the world, no cares. And I figured, I know she was saying it wrong because she didn't know how to say don't care, but it just started making perfect sense to me. And I hope it makes perfect sense to you. And I parked at the mall and, um, I'm going to be the first to admit I'm not the greatest parker and I'm not the great greatest backer upper. I just, I suck backing up and I suck parking. And one of my friends sat there and said, um, you know, you're all crooked, right? And I was like, I went to put my car in reverse to straighten up. And I just, then I finally just kind of looked at her and I'm like, yeah, no care. And I just got my purse and got out of the car. And that moment was so liberating. I can't even begin to tell you how liberating it was. And I started having weekly no care days. Sundays was my no care day. I didn't care. And my friends were like, oh no, are you having a no care day? And I was like, yes, I am. And they're like, oh no, okay. Because it would start frustrating them. And then I started realizing the frustration is with you. It's not with me. I'm having a no care day. It's frustrating you. You need to see why it's frustrating you. And after a while, my friends started laughing with me. I mean, we would do things and they're like, well, you know, and I'm like, no care. And they're like, yep, no care. And, and, and we'd all start laughing and having this wonderful time. But it was all simple things, you know, like, um, you're not going to brush your hair before you go out. And, you know, my friends, even my friends started doing it. Yep, no care. And I was like, okay, well, hey, you're the one that's got to walk around like that. And we started taking back this childlike innocence that we all used to have before junior high set in. You know, you remember when you were really little and you used to go up and just talk to anybody at the store. You just didn't care and nothing bothered you. And then all of a sudden, you know, we hit junior high and people started judging us and, you know, oh, you know, look at her wearing those pants and look at her wearing that shirt. And we never outgrew junior high. Until today, we really care what other people think about us. Why? Why? Think about this for a moment. I mean, really think about this for a moment. If you go to the grocery store, let's say you're in another town. You're visiting another town. This just recently happened to me. And I just started talking to somebody in line and you know, blah, 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 and just start having this conversation, and, you know, and one of my friends said to me, why are you talking to that stranger? And I'm like, because I can. Why not? You know, they're like, what's he going to think of you? What does it matter? I'm in another town. These people don't know me. Chances are I'm never going to go back there. And if I were to die tomorrow, would this man even remember me? I mean, honestly, so we give way too much importance as to how people see us, how people perceive us, what people think of us, when really, who cares? No care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because in the grand scheme of things, like I've said before, in the grand scheme of things, it does not matter. We are who we are. We're human. We make mistakes. And a lot of us do not live the way that we truly want to live. 
and we're not happy, truly happy, because we're constantly under this oppression, under rules, under society's view of what we should be like and how we should act and how we should behave and how we should talk. Otherwise, people might think so badly of us, you know, and, and so what? The people that in my life that are not open-minded enough to understand my ways, I don't want them in my life anyway. I want people that are very open-minded and, um, you know, they're, they're willing to experience everything that life has to offer. I know that a lot of you, all you do is see me sitting here talking to you. Um, you know, you guys never get to see what I actually dress like when I go out into the street. But, you know, I'm not the type of person and people who know me, you're free to comment down below and tell everybody, I don't care. Um, people who know me can vouch for me. I'm not beyond going out there and throwing on a full length black skirt with combat boots. I'm not, you know, I don't care if it's what I feel like wearing that day. It's what I wear. You know, lately, one of my favorite pants in the world has holes all over them. <laughs> and every time I put them on, I always have family members that will look at me and go, um, you're not really going to go out with those because they've got holes all over them. You know, those are oh, Marie. And I'm like, what, what, you know, well, you know, and then other people go, you know, you know, your age, you should dress a little bit. Oh my God. I don't care. No care. Don't care what people have to think about me. I don't care what people think about what I look like. You know, I've, I mean, I've even recently heard someone say, oh, I have to lock down my Facebook because I'm applying for a job and I don't want my, um, you know, my employer to know. It's who you are. It's who you are. So you're going to lie and you're going to get this job and then your employer is going to eventually find out who you truly are anyway. It's like these people that I see them all the time and my friends do it all the time. Sorry, guys. Um, I see them go into relationships and, you know, they put on this pretty little face and this is who I am and I'm such a good person when deep down inside I know who they are and they're lying. They're lying through their teeth, you know, and this is um, a lot of the reason, you know, when I became single, I said, I don't date. I do not date. I don't do the date thing. I don't because I don't I think it's all a bunch of puppycock. People go out. They pretend to be who they're not, blah, blah, blah. No, you know, I, I don't want to do that. So, you know, a lot of my friends were like, well, you're never going to get into a relationship. Well, I don't really care because I do not play games. I don't, I don't want to pretend this is who I am. This is me. And whoever doesn't like it does not have to talk to me, does not have to see me. And someone um, said some, something very meaningful that when it hit home with me and they said, when someone says something about you and it bothers you, it means that you do not love yourself enough. And you know what? Every time that somebody would say something and it would bother me, I would stop and go, oh, I'm not loving myself enough. I need to love myself a little bit more because if I loved myself a little bit more, I wouldn't care what that person thought about me. And now every time that someone says something about me, the first thing that I do is I stop, take a nice deep breath and I say, whew, no care. I need to love myself more. I need to go love myself more, <laughs> you know? So, and you do. And, and that's basically the bottom line because it shouldn't matter. And we let what other people think about us, how other people see us, how other people perceive us, basically run our lives. I've had people actually write me on this channel and say, Marie, you know, you're on YouTube. 
Hundreds of people are seeing you, if not thousands. Why aren't you wearing makeup? Because I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> you don't want to look at my channel? Don't look at my channel. You don't want to subscribe to my channel? Don't subscribe to my channel. I know that sounds horrible, but it's the truth. You know, I mean, you need to do things for you in life. When I write, when I wrote my book, when I write my articles, when I write, I write for my pleasure. I live for my pleasure. I do things for my pleasure. And let me tell you, if everyone, everyone did things for their pleasure and their happiness and their joy instead of everyone else's pleasure and joy, the world would be such a much better place. And I know you're sitting there and saying, but Marie, that's so selfish. That, that's horrible. It's not horrible. If everyone did what they loved, if everyone followed their bliss, just think of how much more happier we would be, how much more happiness we could give, and how much more love we can send out into the world because we would constantly be happy with ourselves. Instead, I'm constantly hearing people over and over and over, and they, they have this anguish, and they're sitting there saying, oh, you know, I have to do this. I have to do this for my wife, and oh, I have to do this, and I have to do this for my children, and I have to do this for my husband, and I have to do this for my boss, and it's like, I just sit there and go, oh, my God, when are you going to do something for you? When, when is it your turn? When do you get to get up and go, you know what? Today, I'm going to do something for me. Not for my husband, not for my wife, not for my kids, not for my boss, not for anyone. I'm going to be selfish and I'm going to sit here and I'm going to play in the mud and I'm going to get mud clear up to my elbows and when somebody calls and says that they need me on the phone I'm going to sit there and I'm going to look and I'm going to go no care because I'm busy enjoying my bliss and my joy and enjoying my day the way that God intended it to be all right so I hope that I have cleared a few things up I hope that this message gets out to as many of you who need to hear it. And please stop caring what other people think about you. Till next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and follow your bliss and no care. Bye-bye.